What's up, Strong by Design Nation? This is Coach Mike Westerdahl here filling in for Chris Wilson as the host of the show today. And we have guest star Coach Brian Klepacki. What's up? He's a uh, functional movement specialist. He's a certified strength and conditioning specialist. He's the creator of the Unlock Your Glutes program, Crunchless Core, Inner Thigh Solution, and a host of other programs, and he's a trainer here at the Compound. So, Brian, welcome to the show. What else did we leave off? Uh, I'm sure there's more to your bio there. I like long walks on the beach. I uh, Actually, you enjoy long runs on the long beach. Long runs You're a on the beach. Guy, right? Yeah. Married two kids, born and raised right here in Florida, and uh, I love training the human body. Amazing. That's, that's my entire life in 30 seconds. <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about the glutes, bigger, rounder, stronger glutes, and Brian is the authority on that topic, so we're going to dive deep into that today. Let's do it. All righty. So, do you think a lot of people have weak glutes? Absolutely. Why? Just because what we're doing right now, right this very second, we're sitting on our butts. The reason why we have weak glutes is that when we sit on our butts, our glutes become dormant and they become weak because, again, sedentary lifestyle. Even if you're extremely active, we're, we sit on our butts most time of the day. And not just that, but when we actually go into the gym and do workouts, we're not training our glutes properly. So there is uh, two main things that causes weak glutes is sitting and poor training styles. And that's pretty much the very basic definition or answer to your question but yeah it reminds me actually of uh jerry seinfeld's stand-up comedy show where he's talking about we just move from sitting to sitting to sitting we drive to the show then we sit at the show then we go out to dinner and we sit at dinner then we get up drive sit again sit at work sit on the couch it's constant sitting i mean some people have don't have jobs where you sit but overall it seems like most of us have weak glutes from sitting so much like you said all right so elaborate a little more what what's wrong with having weak glutes other than like strength and performance are there any other issues associated with with having weak glutes yeah there are uh there are probably at least 30 issues that could result from having weak glutes uh the main ones being poor posture uh we all care about posture and especially when it's something that we do to ourselves if we can control our posture and sitting is one of those most the most dangerous things you can do for your posture because it results in weak glutes and having strong glutes helps reinforce good posture uh, it also helps strengthen the core if you have weak glutes there's a good chance you're going to have a weak core so in case you didn't know what the glutes are it's pretty much your butt the butt is part of the pelvic region or your, like the middle part of your body and which is the core. So your hips, glutes, and your abdominal muscles are all part of your core. It's not just your nice little showy six pack. So having a strong core with your glutes included is going to give you the strength and confidence you need to go throughout your day with good posture, executing good movement, and just pretty much just feeling good because you're able to move properly by having good, strong muscles. Um, long, lo the longer list can, I mean, weakness on any muscle really, not just the glutes, but you know, knee pain, hip pain, back pain, ankle pain. It could even result to headaches. Um, gosh, the, the list does really go on. Um, you can have poor movement, which will result in any type of limitation. A lot know, of injuries, right? A lot of injuries. It, it's pretty much just a laundry list of injuries. And a lot of it does stem from having weak glutes. A lot of people think, hey, you need to strengthen your core. Yeah, but that's that's true too. But your core is always active where your glutes are usually always inactive. So it makes sense to strengthen your glutes and not so much focusing on your core. And when I say core, I mean like your abdominals. You go to any gym or talk to any quote-unquote personal trainer. They say, hey, do these core exercises and you're going to feel better. But the core exercises that they're giving you are pretty much your rectus abdominis muscles. They like you know do like sit-ups and crunches, but yet they have no idea how to properly train the core or the glutes. So yeah, it's pretty much just injuries. Um, now, if you're an athlete listening to this, uh, the glutes are the powerhouse of the body. So if you have weak glutes, you're, you're going to be lacking in the strength, the speed, the power, the rotational power, um, any type of overhead movement. 
So glutes are the powerhouse of the body. They help pretty much deliver power throughout the entire body. So, I mean, gosh, the list just keeps going on and on and on. I mean, I could paint a scenario for almost every person. Right. And I mean, we've covered health issues. um, We've covered performance. But ultimately, it seems like most people are just concerned on what their butt looks like. So this is more of a cultural question in your opinion. This seems to have changed a lot in the last decade. And I have my theory here and I want to see what yours is. But nowadays, it seems like people want a bigger butt. They want to like show off their behind. Girls especially seem like they are proud of having like bigger, stronger butts. If you go back 10, 15 years ago, it was something people wanted to hide. They were embarrassed of it, trying to cover it up. And now it's like people are showing it off. And especially on Instagram, it seems like everybody's got these poses and all this crazy stuff. What is going on? Why has this become such like a hot topic? I mean, this product that you created, uh, Unlock Your Glutes, right now is our best selling product out of all these other dozens of programs we've made. So what's your theory culturally why this is uh, becoming so popular? Ah, man. Um, I would have to say my theory would be the word that you said was Instagram. Uh, That's my theory is because, I mean, we're no strangers to uh, where society is going. And, you know, to go down a rabbit hole for a second, I mean, we live in a generation that all is all consuming on self. Everybody wants to be somebody. Everybody wants to look a certain way. Um, They want to feel better. They want to look better. They want to pretty much just be more sought after like you know famous in in a certain way and what's getting people's attention is you know their self their image how they look and i mean it's sex sells i mean unfortunately and um that's just i would have to attribute the recent trend for glute growth or glute glam i don't even know what the right glute glamour glute glamour (laughs) i mean that that might be the next product but no (laughs) but um i think it's just a lot of people just saying hey I've got this rear end, I'm going to show it off, you know, girls in like little tiny bikinis doing these selfies in the bathrooms and after the workouts. I mean, I remember, you know, 10, 15 years ago, this, this never would have happened. It was kind of the other way around. It was the upper half, you know, abs, shoulders, arms, you know, breast enhancement, whatever. But now it just seems nobody cares about the front of the body. It's all about the rear end. And I think social media in general, it's gotten people addicted to the feedback, to the dopamine hit when you get those those likes, those comments, you're getting attention. Yeah. But um, at the same time, the Kardashians are kind of known for having like junk in the trunk, the big booty, and <laughs> they became like something that a lot of people look up to. I've maybe seen like one episode in my life. j <laughs> <J-Lo. laughs> Yeah. Right, like, I, maybe they made it okay for other people or or made it cooler in some kind of way. Yeah. But yeah, so speak getting back on Instagram, it seems like on Instagram there's so much training advice on glute development. So, how do you know if you can listen to somebody or if you should be listening to them just because they look good? Does that mean that they have good advice for other people that are following them or listening to their stuff? Oh man, uh, do we have enough time to go down <laughs> this conversation? Um, first off, let me tell you a little bit more about myself. I've spent the past, I would say, 16 years actually training clients one-on-one um, and not just out of my garage or out of like a little corporate gym. I, you know, I, I've got a master's degree in exercise science. I spent years and years and years and a lot of money and time f- devoted to training the human body. Um, I've trained Olympic gold medalists. I've trained world champions. Um, I, I just can't tell you the amount of people that I've trained. It's so you put me up against somebody who looks good. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to be the one that's not going to be selected because people usually, again, in this culture and time and age, they want to be with somebody who looks good. It's a it's a self. It's more of like a. We just had this conversation the other day. It's more about brawn than brain. So a lot of people they they even. They, they won't even consider my brains, even though I know how to train the glutes, just because I might not have a huge Instagram following or I might not have good selfies in the gym. So what you need to do uh, to make sure you're training 
properly is first of all, and if you're going to work with somebody, make sure they have the right credentials. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand followers on Instagram. I'm talking like they've got education. They've spent years and years and years actually training in person, not online, not online coaches, because online coaches have no clue what they're doing. Most of them, not all of them, but most of them just are in it to uh, get it's, money. It seems like everybody says they're a coach or has a coaching Every, program or wrote a program, but they have no no education in it. It's just kind of a program they followed themselves. Worked for them doesn't mean it's necessarily right. going to work for everybody with a cookie cutter type and, program. And that's the thing. They think it since it worked for them, uh, it's going to work for everybody else. But, I mean, science clearly states that every body is different and that's why multiple training programs have to be implemented in, in into the routine for things to happen at the same time you don't want an out of shape personal trainer someone's got to have integrity and walk, right and walk the walk so there's that balance too yeah absolutely yep so um yeah i mean i just i get kind of annoyed when it comes to instagram seeing all these people saying hey buy my product or look at my glutes do my glute exercises. I mean, it's there's some validity to, to some of the stuff that's out there, but for the most part, it's just, you know, you're pretty much just copying other people. And it's, I mean, it's, you see the same thing in the gym. I mean, uh, people watch the trainer taking somebody else through a session, catch a couple exercises, then they start doing them, and then someone watches them do it. It's like people are magazine taught or... They see things on the internet, but you don't know where the information is actually coming from. You don't even know if that was a good trainer or why they're doing that exercise with that person. And then people right. will start copying each other. Um, that reminds me, actually, with your background as an endurance athlete, um, the difference between endurance type athletes and sprinters, which kind would have a more developed uh, butt and why? Oh, hands down sprinters. They have... Uh... Some of the best butts in the world, and I don't say that from like a sexual standpoint, um, from a you know physiological standpoint, they're they're some of the most defined, but also the most powerful butts in the world, is because they utilize their glutes in order to propel them forward. So your glutes are um, their prime movers in running and sprinting and also jumping. So it does. I mean, it makes sense that sprinters training at high velocity with max output um, in a horizontal uh, plane of motion that that they utilize every muscle fiber of those glutes. And they're just recruiting more right. more muscle fibers with the high intensity. Yeah, the, the quicker you can extend your leg uh, results in more glute development. So your, your glute max, your main glute muscle, is it's the primary movement of the glute max is hip extension. And I mean, the hip extension is how you walk, how you run. But to the degree that they push off the ground, um, it's just going to recruit more muscle fibers for the glute max. And that's why they have amazing rear ends. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. All right. Let's take a break here. Next, we're going to move into different uh, mistakes people make in training their glutes, what kind of mistakes we're seeing in the gym. But first, let's play a game. So we're not prepared for this. I haven't told <laughs> Brian we're doing this. And we're oh, just going to go back and forth. Naming different names for the glutes. Oh, boy. And uh, you can start to make things easier. All right. Let's well, keep it easy. Let's just say butt. All right. Glute, <laughs> glutes. First person to not be able to think of something loses. You got it like five All seconds. Right. Uh, rear end. Keister. Your hiney. <laughs> Booty. Your rump. Bum bum. Your caboose. Dead ass. <laughs> uh, honey baked ham. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is that what? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is now. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm not going down that down that path. <laughs> I had an email that had a whole list. Oh, uh, man. I think I'm going to lose here. I'm cracking under pressure. Uh, All right. You, you, you can win that contest. All right. You're, yeah. the, you're the glute expert. Let's keep you it clean. You know more names <laughs> for the glutes. All right, so talking about mistakes in the gym that people are making, mm -hmm. I'm a, what I always thought was for glutes, you're going to squat. What do you think of as far as squatting for glute development? It, uh, it's funny because up until a few years ago, I thought the same thing. Squats and deadlifts were the ultimate uh, lower body 
developers. Um, but a lot of research has surfaced in the past few years. Good, good, credible research uh, has proven that squats and glutes, or excuse me, squats and deadlifts are quad and hamstring dominant exercises. I'm not saying that they don't hit the glutes, they're just not the best exercises for the glutes. Uh, squats are predominantly quadricep and your deadlifts are predominantly hamstrings. Now you will, again, like I said, you will hit the glutes in both of those movements, but your prime movers, your prime muscles being used are not the glutes. So uh, a lot of people just didn't, and still don't understand that in order to build your glutes, you need to do something else. It's called the hip thrust. Uh, that is the number one exercise you should be doing to get a rounder, stronger butt. There's no way around it. You can't skip this exercise. It should be the number one exercise that you do. For the, people that aren't familiar with it, can you kind of exp explain yeah, what so the exercise that, looks like? Think about the squat and a deadlift. You're in an upright standing position. The hip thrust is a, uh, a horizontal position. So you're in a horizontal plane, you're on your back, or excuse me, on your shoulders on a bench, and you're th pretty much thrusting your hips up and down from a elevated position. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, There's actually a picture of it if you go to unlockmyglutes.com and it says the number one exercise for a bigger, stronger, rounder butt and it's towards the bottom of the page and it shows the start and finish position with pictures. And you can do this you know, with a barbell, you can do it with body weight, you can do it by putting a sandbag or a gym bag on your lap or dumbbell, anything really. It's the, it's the movement which you know, you learned this at, at some of the seminars you went to. There was a study, right, that showed that this had the most muscle recruitment mm -hmm. of any exercise recruiting uh, recruiting the glute muscles. Like you said, with squat, even lunges, deadlifts, yes, you work the glutes, but it's a total leg exercise. It's not specific to the glutes. So right. you get the most bang for your buck with this one exercise. Yep, absolutely. And the cool thing about the uh, hip thrust it's, uh, I've used this exercise on hundreds of uh, individuals, a lot of them with knee pain and back pain. And, and it's, I mean, if you have knee pain and back pain, you're probably not gonna be squatting or deadlifting. You're right. gonna be doing, you know, other exercises to hit those muscles. But the hip thrust, it puts very little, if, if not any uh, stress or, or pain on the knees and back. So it, it's, a, it's a very f friendly, safe exercise that, nearly everybody can do yeah and that's i mean that's that's huge especially if you're looking to get stronger rounder rear end yeah i mean with a powerlifting background i love the bench squat and deadlift and it's definitely something we do to train here but as you talk to people especially people over 40 or who have had some time off from the gym or some injuries how many times do you hear people saying oh i can't squat because of my knees or i don't deadlift because my back hurts same thing with the lunges people's knees hurt uh, people do that a little more, but this one, like you said, there's no pressure on the spine or very, very little and very little pressure on the knees too. So it's definitely an amazing exercise. Right. And I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, marathon training right now for myself and I don't do squats or deadlifts. I do some modified lunges and things like that and maybe some body weight movements, uh, like squat, uh, some squat variations, but just because I know the, the stress it puts on my knees and my hips, and I want to save my knees and hips for running. Um, so I kind of avoid those exercises, but I still incorporate the hip thrust, and I can go heavy and, and run, you know, 10, 12 miles the next day. It's, it, it, it's, very, it's very specific in the muscles that are targeted with the hip thrust, and it's predominantly glutes, like I've said a few minutes ago. Do you remember the study offhand? You can check it in the uh, the Yeah, it's... Um, it's out of 2017 Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. Yeah. Um, it's a very good article or research study that, uh, that it's highly quoted. And um, I, I mean, with every, with every research, there, there are some, you know, limitations and restrictions. I get that. But this research also takes into consideration other research that has been done um, around this topic. So that that's, that's such a great... Uh, research study that I, I love to uh, use, you know, to almost argue the point that squats and deadlifts are not the answer to developing a, a round butt. Right. And they're not the only answer because you're going to have people say, I definitely have grown my glutes with those exercises. Oh, yeah. But we're just sharing some better ways, some newer ways. Yeah. Um, another mistake or another issue 
how long do people have to spend in the gym, do you think, in order to to get a great workout in, especially for their glutes? Oh, well, they don't have to spend any time, actually. You can get a great workout at home. Okay. Um, a lot of research is, it, again, it might not be glute-specific research, but research is showing that body weight movements are an effective way to gain strength, to gain endurance, to improve flexibility and all that stuff. So you actually don't have to go to the gym to see development taking place in your body. However, yeah, you're going to definitely see some better improvements quicker um, if you do get in the gym, but you don't have to spend hours in the gym doing, you know, monotonous, long, drawn-out workouts. You, you can get a great workout in, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes um, doing specific exercises. So, again, a lot of people, they just go to the gym. I mean, no fault to themselves. It's just, just because it's a lack of education. They go to the gym thinking, I have to spend an hour and a half working on just my chest or yeah. just my stomach or just my legs. But in reality is you can get a great total body workout in such a short amount of time. And you don't have to do, you know, all these quote unquote leg exercises for your glutes. If you do glute specific exercises at the gym or at home, you can get an awesome glute workout and see some great things happening in such a short amount of time. I mean, your program's got a hybrid approach, right? And you've got gym options Mm -hmm. and body weight options. Right. So so how long are your workouts and how many days a week? Uh, Glutes program. It's uh, maybe 20 to 30 minutes, uh, depending on um, rest periods. If you need to rest a little longer, uh, rest, you know, go a little quicker. I mean, I, there's some of the workouts in there that are, are going to be super fast that you can easily knock out in 15 minutes. Just get in, warmed up, warm yourself up, get after it, cool down, and you're done. Uh, some of the, the, the gym exercises and the gym workouts might be a little longer just based on getting equipment set up, um, availability of equipment, and things like that. But again, you're not going to spend no more than 30 minutes, maybe, maybe 35 minutes with a cool down in the gym. Uh, getting a, an, an awesome glute workout. Again, we're not we're not squatting, we're not deadlifting, we're training the glutes. We're working on glute specific exercises. So if you cut out all the other filler exercises, you, you're not wasting time. And which that's where a lot of people get into trouble is they do too many exercises that aren't helping them reach their goals. I mean, you've made probably a thousand videos on the on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash critical bench as far as how many glute training videos do you think you have up there there's got to be a couple hundred yeah i would i'd say it probably close to 200 videos <laughs> just on glute specific type <laughs> and again yeah the glutes i mean if the glutes are three muscles you got your glute max your glute minimus and your glute medius so they're they're all three uh in one but they're all unique and different and need to be trained differently and a lot of people don't understand how to train the other two smaller muscles of the glutes. So that's why there's so many videos, just because, again, there's so many styles and ways and methods to train the glutes. And when I'm talking training, I'm talking stretching, recovery, uh, injury prevention, uh, warming up, cooling down, muscle activation. Again, it's not just going to the gym and doing machines or just lifting weights. Like there's there's a whole training Uh, a different training approach to actually working out. Yeah. I mean, you touched on this earlier, waking up the glutes, which is the other gym mistake. Just people sitting so much that they have sleeping glutes. And we're talking about waking up the sleeping giant within because this is the largest muscle in the entire body. Can you explain a little bit how the hip, you did mention it earlier, but a little more in depth on how the hip flexors are related and keeping the glutes inhibited? And what you, what you have to do with your hip flexors. Right. Yeah. So there's this thing called neuromuscular activation. Uh, I'm not the one to coin that phrase. It's been around and studied, you know, probably for decades now. And it is actually used to help uh, physical therapists uh, first start with their their clients who uh, either post-surgery or suffered from some kind of uh, neurological uh, injury, anything like that. But what it is essentially is you're waking up your muscle. You're waking up nerve endings to tell the brain, hey, I'm about to use this muscle. I need to send biofeedback to the from the brain to the muscle to say, hey, it's it's go time. We need to get all the muscles, all the muscles fiber muscle fibers ready to uh, to be used. So when we sit on our butts or it, 
you're pretty much putting your butt to sleep. It's a sleeping giant. Like I said, it, it's the powerhouse of the body. So, but if it's sleeping, it's no good. And even if you do, you know, like a couple jumping jacks and you do some light stretches, you're not actually waking up the muscle. You're warming it up, but you're not waking it up. And there is a difference. When in order to wake up a muscle, the muscle has to be stimulated in order for the brain to receive the feedback. And then the brain sends the muscle that feedback saying, hey, let's go. It's time to fire up and uh, get the work done. So the neuromuscular activation is something that a lot of people just don't, they might have never, never even heard of it. But uh, in this program, uh, it's an absolute must. You can't skip it. You have to do it in order to properly fire those glutes because, again, it all comes back to sitting. When we sit, our glutes are asleep. We need to wake them up. And that's done through neuromuscular activation. In addition to that, to make neuromuscular activation as effective as possible, you have to stretch out the antagonistic muscle, which is the hip flexor area, the psoas. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a dominant muscle that needs to be stretched out because, again, if you're in a seated position, hey, guess what happens? That hip flexor is shortened, it's tight, it's abused, and it's also sleeping. So you need to stretch that muscle out in order for the glutes to wake up properly. So you're saying stretch out the six and a half inch muscle to unlock your glutes? Absolutely. Well, it depends how tall the person is. It could be an eight-inch muscle. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> stretch, clear. stretch out that muscle, activate your glutes through neuromuscular activation, and then guess what? It's time to work. It's time to go. It's time to train those glutes. I mean, you can walk into the gym and just hop under any type of machine or any type of, uh, any type of exercise and start working. But again, if you want to get the most out of your workout and the, get the most out of your muscle, you have to wake those glutes up, have to wake up those muscles. Yeah, I'm checking checking out the book here. You just, how many pages did you say this was? Um, a lot. It's like 80 pages. Most people, I don't know, if you're like a, an exercise guy or a fitness professional, you're going to want to read the whole thing. A lot of what we talked about today, the research, how the muscles work, the antagonistic muscles, all that. But ultimately the DVDs, which we made a Blu-ray, which is really cool. It's the first Blu-ray product we've made. I haven't seen really any other Blu-rays. Um, DVDs, they seem outdated, like who's even using DVDs anymore, but half the people that buy our products select the DVD option versus the digital. And anyway, the DVD is a follow along. So you got Coach Brian taking you through the workout um, he's doing it and you do it along with him. Then there's also a coaching video where he teaches all the exercises. So that's a problem with a lot of workouts. I've been frustrated before. I remember when I started out, you buy a program and you have no idea how to do everything and you have to go to YouTube and look up every single exercise to figure it out. So with this DVD, you can follow along and then there's the digital version too. So do it on your tablet or your TV. Plus it comes with the book. The book has exercise definitions for every single exercise in the program. Um, all the research and stuff for the for the fitness geeks out there like us and then we got the whole program parameters and overview so it's pretty amazing what you put together here and I think it's the best thing that we've ever created here at Critical Bench. Cool yeah it's uh, I mean there's there really should be no questions after uh, with the book and watching the DVD I mean everything is explained perfectly um, I mean to the T it's it's flawless and it's definitely gonna help anybody young, old, uh, brand new to exercise, or, or even a, a veteran to working out. I mean, it's everything is in, in these pages and on that, on that disc. Yeah, and we're not here to pitch this and try to get you. Well, we are. We want you to buy our stuff because we know it's going to help you. But we're also here to provide valuable free content for you. So we do have a giveaway for you today. We've got the five-minute glute workout, which you can have for free. Do you remember the URL offhand? Is it criticalbench.com forward slash glutes? Yep. Yeah, if you go there, put your email in, and then Coach Brian will send you the PDF, which has a free five-minute glute workout in there. And you think in five minutes, what could you possibly do? Hmm. Well, try this workout, and your your butt muscles will be on fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. definitely help yourself to that free gift. We appreciate you guys listening. And uh, maybe if, if this episode does amazing, we'll do, we'll do a follow-up one on glutes. And appreciate you guys listening.
Signing off. Thanks, Brian. Anything else you wanted to say? That's it. Uh, and then definitely go to YouTube. Check out all of our glute videos on there. Uh, we've got, like I said, probably a couple hundred glute videos that I know at least one of them is going to be helpful to you. So, And uh, check us out on Instagram, too. That's all we got. Yeah, and if you want a transcript of this and you want to read it, you can go check that out at youarestrongbydesign.com. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Talk Bye. to you next time. Bye. Thanks, Mike.